Based on what we now know, the majority of Florida will have major hurricane impacts with deadly storm surge and life-threatening winds. Here in Lee County in southwest Florida, there is a danger of life-threatening storm surge impacts over the next 36 hours. The threat of significant storm surge flooding along the southwest coast of Florida has increased and 6 to 12 feet of impacts above ground. 6 to 12 feet. It is impossible in this area, especially from Captiva to Chukaleski. This is a life-threatening situation. The storm surge will rush in and could kill you. Think about it, 6 to 12 feet. That is taller than some homes. And it's going to rush in. You're not going to survive this if it happens. On evacuations, if you have been ordered to evacuate now, not in two or three hours, not in 10 hours, not tomorrow morning, now is the time to evacuate. If you, leave, if you live in an evacuation zone in these counties and have been ordered to evacuate, Lee, Hendry, Palm Beach, Broward, Miami-Dade, Monroe, or Collier County, you must evacuate by midnight tonight or find shelter to avoid life-threatening impacts. If you're in this area and are planning to leave and have not done so by midnight, do not get on the road. It will not be safe for you or the law enforcement needed to protect you. Again, if you're, planned, if you're in these area, those counties, if you're planning to leave and do not leave by midnight tonight, you will have to ride out this extremely dangerous storm at your own risk. School buses are aiding in evacuations. Please take advantage of this service. I am a father and a grandfather. I love my family. I can't imagine life without them. Do not put yourself or your family in harm's way. If you've been ordered to evacuate and are still home, please go to a shelter. I encourage everyone to check on your neighbors. If you know somebody in your neighborhood who is not evacuating and should, please contact them. Today is the day to do the right thing for your family and get to safety. This storm is wider than our entire state. Think about that. It's wider than our entire state. It is expected to cause major and life-threatening impacts from coast to coast. Remember, Hurricane Andrew was one of the worst storms in the history of our state. Irma is more devastating on its current path. We are being very aggressive in our preparation for this storm, and every Floridian should take this seriously and be aggressive to protect your family. Possessions can be replaced. Your life and your family cannot. I think about my mom and how hard it would have been for her to be completely broke and have kids and have to evacuate. But you have to do it. You can't afford not to do it. Think about your family. You have to keep your family safe. To private business owners, please be compassionate with your employees as they prepare for this storm and evacuate. I was a business owner when Hurricane Andrew devastated the state 25 years ago. The single most important thing right now is the safety of your employees and their families. Traffic. We still see some traffic jams, but they are getting cleared. Evacuations are not convenient. They are meant to keep you safe. We want all evacuations to be safe. I am glad so many people are driving to safe places. We have increased the number of troopers on Florida roadways to help move traffic and keep people going down the road. Many, many individuals are asking about counterflow, or counterflow. We still need southbound lanes to get needed gas and supplies down to shelters and families that need it in the southern parts of our state. Contraflow inhibits our ability to get emergency vehicles to people that need them. Right now, to ease congestion, we've activated the use of shoulders on I-75 from Wildwood to the Georgia Line. Please drive safely and listen to law enforcement. They're working to keep you and your family safe. Real-time traffic information and evacuation routes are available, fl511.com. You do not need to evacuate out of the state or hundreds of miles away to stay safe. You can find shelter in your county unless you're in Monroe County. If you don't need to get on the road, don't. Again, if you're convinced you, do not have to, you don't have a way to evacuate, due to traffic, fuel, whatever it is, call the Florida Emergency Information Hotline at 1-800-342-3557. It's a dedicated hotline. We will do everything we can to help you get out, but you cannot wait until the storm hits. Fuel. We know there are problems with uh, fuel at our gas stations. 
State law enforcement are providing escorts to gas trucks to get them through traffic so they can get to the stations faster. These law enforcement escorts have continued through the night, which will keep, you know, they're going to keep going as long as they can. For gas stations and evacuation zone, zones, we need you to stay open as long as you can so people can get as much fuel and get out. We will arrange police escorts for your employees so they can get out safely. We need gas stations and evacuation zone, zones to stay open as long as possible so we can get people out. We know fuel is important, and we are doing everything we can to get, get more fuel here. I've, I've worked with the White House, I've worked with the EPA, I've worked with FEMA, I've worked with everybody, Department of Transportation, everybody to get more fuel into the state and then get that fuel out to our stations. Three tanker ships delivered fuel to Port Tampa Bay yesterday for resupply efforts, each delivering 1.2 million gallons of fuel. And as of 6 p.m. last night, 8.4 million gallons of fuel was shipped into Port Everglades and more than 5 million gallons of fuel was shipped into Port Tampa Bay. State law enforcement continues to escort fuel supply trucks from Port Tampa Bay, Port Everglades, and Jacksport directly to gas stations in your community. We are aggressively working to move excess fuel staged in the Florida Panhandle to communities, especially in the north central part of the state. However, if, you, if you're in an evacuation zone in South Florida, you need to leave now. Port Everglades will be closing tonight for safety and gas will no longer be resupplied into much of southern Florida after the storm hits until after the storm hits. If you're, con again, if you're concerned that you can't get out because of whatever reason, traffic, fuel, whatever it is, 1-800-342-3557. We will do everything we can to get you out, but you cannot wait. Shelters. Last night I directed all schools to be closed. Uh, K-12, state colleges, universities, all to be closed, and all state offices uh, are, were closed effective today through Monday. Uh, this is to ensure we have all the space we need for sheltering and staging. Floridians have, to have a Floridians have to have access to every place they can for shelter. Shelters are available, and you should follow the directions of local officials to go to the shelter that fits your needs. <coughs> Volunteers. Over 17,000 people have volunteered to help in this. I think, first off, thank, thanks everybody for volunteering. Um, the, we need more. I know we're going to need more. I want to thank everyone who's opened their hearts to help. And we can't thank you enough. If you want to volunteer, go to volunteerflorida.org to sign up for volunteer opportunities. National Guard. All 7,000 members of the National Guard that are available have been activated as of today. Every member available has been activated in advance of this storm. They are working hard to get people, they're working hard to make sure we all get to safety. Utilities. They are actively pre-positioning resources throughout the state and in neighboring states. We know how important power is, and we're going to do everything we can to get the power back on after this storm hits. It's a little harder to get, get pre-positioned when you have the, the whole state being impacted by this um, storm. I want to thank the governors of other states that provided every resource we've asked for. A lot of governors have reached out to me, uh, and I've called others to ask for resources. Everything I've asked for, they've done. I know the entire country is behind us, and we have the best first responders in the country spread throughout the state, and every state's ready to help. But Let's think about it. We're running out of time. This storm's, this storm's going to hit. It's almost here. If you're in an evacuation, evacuation zone, don't wait. Get out now. This is a catastrophic, catastrophic storm that our state has never seen before. Remember, we can build you, rebuild your house. You can get your possessions again. You can't rebuild your life, and you can't rebuild your family. Protecting life is our absolute top priority. No resource or expense will be spared to protect life. Florida is tough. Florida is resilient. Florida is unbreakable. Let's all stay together and, to get together and help each other. We are an amazing melting pot of loving people, and I'm proud to be the governor of this state. Este huracán es muy peligroso. Si, su vida es lo más importante. Cada familia debe de tener un plan. Por favor, salgan si están en zona de evacuación. Por más información, por favor, llamen al 1-800-342-3557. Mi prioridad es que todos, familias, turistas, estén seguros y preparados. Tienen que tener tres días de agua, alimentos y las medicinas que necesiten. Como gobernador, mi prioridad es que todos en la Florida estén seguros y preparados. Now I'll turn it, on, turn it over to Sheriff Scott. I can tell you, my experience with Sheriff Scott is an individual that shows up each and every day to protect the citizens of Lee County. 
He will do everything he can to protect every citizen here. But all of us have to work to take care of each other. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Uh, just a bit about local law enforcement. Uh, I spoke personally this morning with the area chiefs, all of the sheriffs, uh, united on the front with our federal counterparts and, of course, our state counterparts like the Highway Patrol and uh, FWC and others that are here with us. Uh, law enforcement, of course, remains committed to the primary efforts of public safety. I've heard some questions recently about uh, bridge closures and talking about when law enforcement or public safety actually withdraws typically at that 40 to 45 mile per hour sustained wind that's when law enforcement will withdraw as well. However, we will be all hands on deck right up and until the impact and then immediately after uh, within reason. I want to share something too that's not been said. Typically, as with Andrew, and the governor mentioned Andrew, I was a young deputy and went from this coast to that coast for Andrew. There's a big difference with this storm and it bears noting that because of our mutual aid throughout the state with the Florida Sheriff's Task Force that is chaired by Sheriff Bill Permel just to the north here in Charlotte County, and I was on the phone with him all morning, because of the nature of this storm and the way it's expected to impact the entirety of the state versus a specific region, it has crippled, frankly, and I wish it were better news, crippled to an extent what we typically are able to do in terms of committing resources to other areas. For example, in Andrew, law enforcement from this side of the state went to the other side and assisted. That is not going to be anything immediate, and so local law enforcement, um, specifically in this region, will be somewhat on our own uh, in the uh, immediacy of this. Beyond that, I want to talk about evacuations. The governor mentioned midnight tonight. That's a great benchmark to hit in terms of not going to the roads. Earlier today, our county, very earlier, just moments ago, in fact, our county manager and our county attorney finalized Zone A, which is a new zone in terms of mandatory evacuation. I think that's been released in the media release, but I want to speak to that now. That includes a lot of the corridor along Bayshore Road just north of the Caloosahatchee River. And it also includes now much more down in the south, Estero, Benito, no Mayor Simmons and others are here from that area. The Imperial River uh, area is affected by that. It means what it is. It's a, it's a mandatory evacuation and we want people to understand it doesn't necessarily mean you have to gather all your belongings and get on the road. There are shelters available. Right now we have over half a dozen shelters available, all with available space, and the county is working very closely with those uh, assets, as the governor mentioned, schools specifically, to make sure that we have plenty of space for folks. So the suggestion would be to go to a shelter, at least in the um, uh, just prior to and, of course, after impact. I'll step aside, and uh, did, did anyone else want to speak specifically to this? Um, is there anyone else that has comments specifically, or we go to questions, Governor? Okay. You, okay. Um, nobody else had any questions, then I suppose we'll be available for... Uh, anybody have any questions? Do you have an idea, is there an estimate on how many people are affected by this? Um, the mandatory evacuation, the latest one, zone A? It's 25,000 just in Cape Coral. Okay. Um, speaking with the county manager earlier and based on experience and other models that we've looked at, you can typically think at this point in, at this stage of an, an approaching catastrophe, frankly, maybe 10% of those, you know, would heed that. We understand that some people are more comfortable staying in their home with secured with panels or shutters or plywood or otherwise, and uh, we're, we're simply letting them know that there comes a point where law enforcement and when I say law enforcement, I mean public safety in general, the fire service, EMS, and everybody cannot go out to help. We will be there as, as long as we possibly can, and we will be there in the immediacy of the aftermath. But there is a time in between there when uh, they actually become, in essence, the first responder. These individuals within reach of our voices are the first responders uh, if they choose to get outside of structure. And by structure, I mean a shelter where there's law enforcement present, there's EMS present, um, it is strength in numbers in a hardened building, and there is something to be said for that. And people should heed that warning right now, particularly on this new zone A that came out. Just remember, this is different than a lot of storms. Look at the storm surge and the, the potential storm surge. Six to 12 feet of storm surge is, is catastrophic. I mean, I, I, uh, last year in Ermine, um, I think uh, there was six feet of storm surge. This lady stayed in her house because she had some pets. And she was very fortunate because that when, the, when the water got to three feet and it came up like that, she left her house, had to unfortunately leave her pets, and if it hadn't been for a high water vehicle two doors down that was just leaving her neighborhood, she would have passed away because it, was, it would have gone to the top of her ceiling. So this, don't, don't think that you're going to ride out storm surge. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not rain coming down, it's storm surge. And this water comes in like that. It comes in fast and it goes out fast. So the, the don't, 
and don't play around with storm surge. Sure, we've got some of our viewers are wondering about curfews, if and when a decision would be made about <coughs> curfews in Lincoln County. That'll be uh, based on a totality of circumstances. I'm glad you brought it up, though, because it draws me a little bit of cart before the horse, but certainly we have to think about looting. That came up, actually, in one of our meetings just prior to this with the governor. We have some experience with that as well. And I can tell you that we will be very, very focused on that specifically. I've already spoken with owners of local gun stores, CVS, Walgreens, places that we know to be typically targets for folks that want to take advantage of and, and be opportunists. And I think our policy here and, and elsewhere in this region is one of pretty serious no-nonsense. We will have, as we had in the past with Wilma and others, specific teams, tactical teams, looking for high target areas for just that, for looting. And typically that's what the curfew is meant to to deter, although it could be for those that just want to get out and, and, and play in the aftermath, and that sounds kind of a trite way to say it, but unfortunately there are people that do that. Uh, we need folks to get out of our way so that we can help uh, clear roads and do the things that we need to do. Uh, I, was, I was born and raised in this county, and I can tell you that from the state level down, I have never seen anyone more ready. That which is within our control is under control, I can assure you, and I say we, I mean us collectively from the governor down. However, there are things that are outside of our control, and none of us know the answer. The governor doesn't know it. I don't know it. Our best meteorologists that have been doing a great job in the media don't know either. So those are the unknowns that we're prepared for, and we need the public to help us help them. By the way, I, I just want to remember something about Andrew. Um, when, when Andrew hit, the, I had evacuated two hospitals. I was running a hospital company because it was anticipated to go up the Miami River. In the last, what, half hour or so, we went south. And I, I had moved patients to hospitals in the southern part of Miami. We had to hand vent patients for hours because every lost power, the windows all got blown in. So you don't know what exactly uh, is going to happen with this storm path. So we've got to be careful. Did you want to say something? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Um, with Cape Coral just being announced as one of the newest for the evacuation for Zone A, um, I just want to assure our, our residents in Cape Coral that our city staff, our city manager, our po public personnel, um, we're here to assist. We will be pumping out as much information as you can. If you can, please go to www.capecoral.net slash hurricane, and that has all of the most up-to-date information for our own city. And I encourage um, and stress, just as everyone else here, um, the time now is to evacuate those Zone A areas. So thank you. Do you have an idea of shelter counts at this point yet, or what capacity may be? Shelter counts, did you say? Yeah. I believe we're at seven. Is that correct, Roger? Se seven at the moment? Se seven at the moment. The oh. People, I mean. oh, I'm sorry. In the shelters. Now, right. keep in mind, those just opened at 930 this morning, and so this is somewhat recent. I realize we're getting on into the afternoon, but people have some last-minute preparations. There's plenty, of There's plenty of space. I can tell you that. That's the main thing. And we know. will, if, if around the state, if we need to open more shelters, that's one of the reasons I shut down all the schools. We will open more shelters. We want everybody to be able to have access to a shelter. That's why we're asking for volunteers. That's why, if, why we have 7,000 members of the National Guard activated. Um, but I can tell you, all around the state, the only county that can't is Monroe. And uh, Monroe was evacuated to the Florida International University. We are working to open up shelters wherever we need them. Anybody else? All right, thanks, everybody. Stay safe. Thank you. Thanks again, Governor. Sure.